Around 1200 BC, the countries of the Eastern Mediterranean went into major cultural decline. The Late Bronze Age came to a sudden end. Kingdoms that had wielded immense power completely disappeared. For several centuries after this, agriculture was people's only means of subsistence. These were pivotal changes in history. Explaining them remains one of the big challenges in Mediterranean archaeology. In this video, the Foundation Luvian Studies presents a comprehensive and plausible scenario of what might have happened. Back then, the regions around the Eastern Mediterranean were politically organized in one or two ways. Either they consisted of petty kingdoms ruled by local chieftains who sometimes lived so close together that they could see their neighbors. This was the case, for instance, in Syria, Greece, Western Asia Minor, and on Crete. Or they were organized as great kingdoms. This was the case for Egypt and the Hittite Empire in Central Asia Minor. The rulers of these kingdoms often struggled to maintain internal and external peace. After 1250 BC, the balance between the major and minor forces started to get lost. Documents indicate that the Luvian-speaking petty kingdoms in Western Asia Minor formed a coalition to join forces against the Hittite kingdom. As they had done so often before, they advanced on the Hittites over land. But this time, they also attacked from the sea. They attacked the great king of the Hittites at a moment of weakness, when internal struggles had greatly reduced his power. Apparently, the Luvians also received support from enemies of the Hittites in the north. Marauding tribes advanced from there towards the capital, Hattusha. These raids on Cyprus and Syria came to be known in Egyptian temple inscriptions as the invasions of the Sea Peoples. Before long, temples and palaces had been set on fire. The ruling class was wiped out or escaped, and the Hittite civilization vanished into oblivion for 3,000 years. At this point, the Luvian coalition ruled over a territory stretching from northern Greece all the way to Lebanon. The rulers of Egypt were having to deal with dynastic struggles and were completely preoccupied with domestic affairs. The result was that only one power was left to restrain Luvian dominance, the Mycenaean kings in Greece. They too decided to form a coalition and began building a large fleet. First, they attacked the port cities of Asia Minor. These were easily destroyed because the Luvians weren't able to defend such a large territory. Finally, the armies of both coalitions, the Mycenaean and the Luvian, gathered before the city whose king might have triggered the upheavals. They gathered before Troy, and thus the so-called Trojan War was fought. The city ultimately fell, and the Luvian coalition was forever destroyed. The territories it had controlled were left to fend for themselves. But the Greeks were unable to profit from their mighty victory. During the years the Greek kings had been at war, deputies had assumed rulership of their realms. These deputies didn't want to relinquish power when the legitimate kings had returned victorious from war. Some of the homecoming leaders were murdered. Others heard of the upheavals and decided not to return home at all. Only a few were able to resume their throne without difficulty. As a consequence, traditional Mycenaean kingdoms existed next to areas of anarchy. Eventually, total civil war was inevitable, and it brought about the end of the Mycenaean era. The aristocratic societies of Greece and Asia Minor had disappeared, and the royal courts that had nurtured such great artistry and craftsmanship lay in ruins. For 400 years, people in Greece even lost their knowledge of writing and administration. Long-distance trade had collapsed even earlier, and passage into the Black Sea had become impossible without the help of Trojan pilots. A Dark Age commenced. 